spirit of revival. Get a hold of you in the sanctuary. Let his power move on you. I praise you. I praise you. Come on, somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, praise God. Aren't you thankful for the honor and the privilege of being in God's house tonight? We don't invite him in here. This is his house. He beckons us to come and dine. Amen. The call of the master to sit and sup at his table. Amen. To feast on the goodness and the mercy of God. Amen. I'm thankful for what the Lord did this morning. And I'm thankful for that miracle at 2 p.m. I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing at Hope. I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing at Louisville Central. Amen. I have an announcement. There is an eclipse tomorrow. I don't know if you've heard. Everybody in their third cousin has asked me what I think about it. So I'm going to tell you what I think about it. I think it's going to be dark. (laughs) And he said there would be signs in the heavens. That's what Jesus said. But I'm not as concerned about the eclipse as what is not being said. Because the powers that be are good at over-promoting stuff and saying, look over here while they do stuff over here. So I'm, while everybody's spending all their money and all that kind of stuff, I can't remember what my brother told me, how much revenue bringing into Texas. $1.4 billion. There's a reason why they promote this stuff. Is there biblical prophecy attached to it? Maybe I don't know. It's not on the Jewish holiday that I know of, meaning Passover, Pentecost, or Tabernacles. Um, perhaps it is. I know crisscrossing in Nineveh six times, seven times, and riding a dead center rapture and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine. So it's tomorrow. If you're worried about the eclipse, make sure you get right tonight. All right. So, I mean, there's no question that signs are all around us. There's no question that there's a, a red heifer. That's, that's true. I'm not. I'll just leave that right there. <laughs> there's a whole lot of jokes you could attach to heifer right there. But anyway, but they apparently have got the red heifer. I don't know if they sacrificed it or not. I heard it was supposed to be sacrificed on Easter. I didn't hear anything about it being sacrificed on Easter. But, and, I, and I'm not saying dismiss the signs, okay? They're here. They're upon us. Jesus is coming soon. There's no question about it. But I also know that for the last 30 years, they've been talking about that red heifer. And about 25 years ago, they had one in Mississippi that was supposed to be taken over there, and they were going to do it, and, and they were going to whatever whatever you call it, they were going to start, what, what, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, making more of them. <laughs> Breeding, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for those of you that waited five minutes to rescue me out of that horrible place. My God, before I said something really bad. 
Breeding, that's a good word for it. But anyway, they, they found a white hair in it, so they dismissed it. I'm not dismissing any of it. I'm not dismissing any of it. Jesus said, when you see all these things begin to come to pass, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And I think we can all agree that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Right? So, if you're concerned about that, those of you who've been studying, I'm happy for your education. It's wonderful. I don't dismiss that. And uh, if you find out the Lord's coming 31 minutes from now, do send me a text. I really would appreciate it. I really, I'm being a little funny, but I'm not sliding the many of you that have asked me about the eclipse. Um, my my daughter and my future son-in-law in, in less than three weeks, wherever he went, um, were down at the, yeah, okay, but down at the, I don't know if you heard that if you dress like a cowboy and consider ranch dressing, okay, good. All right, but anyway, they were, they were down at our exit and uh, at the gas station and the attendant said he couldn't even, they were so busy he couldn't even take a break because all the people coming in to watch the eclipse staying at the Motel 6 on our, on our exit. That's desperate right there. I, you, it's going to take more than an eclipse to get me at a Motel 6. I can tell you that right now. I'm not. I mean, it'll take a whole lot more. I'll never stay at a Motel 666. So that's a, that's a different chain. But anyway. We're just having fun. Now listen, I, I promise you the title of my message did not have anything to do with the eclipse. Matter of fact, I completely forgot there was an eclipse this week. I honestly did not even know it was tomorrow until somebody mentioned it uh, about two hours before service. And so what I'm preaching, I'm not trying to tag into that theme. Um, but uh, you'll see here in, in just a minute, this, this is the title that came to me. And uh, I'll read my text, Matthew 13. Oh, my goodness, I didn't send these to you. I'm so sorry. Uh, Matthew 13 and 31, four verses. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his Field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs. I usually preach, quote this passage of scripture from when I'm preaching on faith. There'll be some faith mixed in here, but that's not my topic tonight. When it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. A mustard seed that becomes the greatest of herbs when it's grown. The birds of the air come and lodge in its branches. Verse 33. Another parable spake he unto them. I've never preached from this parable ever. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. She took leaven, she hid it in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Verse 34, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. In the parables of Jesus are secrets about the kingdom of God that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. At that time, that was 4,000 years. Imagine God kept these things about his kingdom secret for 4,000 years. Amen. Leaven in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened. 
I want to talk to you tonight about cosmic bread. Cosmic bread. Now, there's, there's multiple definitions of cosmic. Three of them relate to kind of intergalactic outer space kind of stuff, and that's fine with me because everything about the kingdom of God is celestial. But the third definition means immeasurably extended in time and space or vast. Cosmic means immeasurably extended in time and space or vast. Cosmic bread. Amen. Make contact with your neighbor. Let's pray tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and grace. You are so good to us, God. So long-suffering. We worship you. We worship you. We thank you, Lord God, for your power. I believe, God, that you're going to reveal things in this place, that there's going to be something that's going to ignite inside of our souls. Here in the name of the Lord God, I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. Amen. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord? Would you give him praise? Give him praise like you know how good he is. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You look great. Half of you may be seated. God bless you. Y'all figured it out. Some of you are slow to see it. sit down. Now the other half may sit down. These parables of Jesus have always intrigued me. He talks about the pearl of great price. He talks about the great net that was cast. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a great net that is cast. It brings in all kinds of fish. And he gives great detail there. In Matthew 13, he talks about the parable of the sower, the seed that was sown on stony ground and good ground and the thorny places and by the wayside. He talks about the wheat and the tares. The tares that the enemy came in during the time of Harvest or before harvest, and he sowed seed among the wheat, sowed tares among the wheat. <clears throat> it was revealed at the harvest time the, the rich principles that are, are learned and revealed there by God in these parables are so very necessary for us to understand. The scope of the parable of the seed that is sown is very simple, and that is, it is to show that the beginnings of the gospel or the beginnings of the kingdom of God would be small. It would be minute in the very beginning, comparably speaking to to the Jewish believers and the law that they had followed for so long. It would start very small as a grain of mustard seed but then it would greatly increase. And in this way, the work of of grace in the heart of every believer would be discovered. What you receive when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the earnest of your inheritance. It is the Spirit of God being deposited on the inside of you so that it can grow and mature and cause you to be transformed into the image of the Son of God, who was Jesus Christ. And it is a work of grace. I know that it requires effort and participation and obedience on our behalf, on our part, but it is a work of grace. It is the gift of God. It is not something that we can produce on our own, but it is the kingdom of God within us. Jesus told them, he said, the kingdom of God is within you. It is this grain of mustard seed that was deposited in you on the day that you were filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in the only saving name of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. 
so the kingdom of God is, is within us and it would be, it would be carried on. And in this soul where, where grace truly resides, it, it will grow over time as we learn and we gain experience and we suffer triumph or trial and tragedy, as we go through seasons of life, as I preached about this morning, as your faith is constantly under construction, flesh is being eliminated, carnality is being eliminated, and the kingdom of God is expanding within you until it will become the greatest of verbs to where souls will be attracted into your life. The birds of the air will come and lodge in your branches. Now, the larger, the larger understanding of this is not the, the Spirit of God being deposited in the individual believer, but it is the church at large, which began with, a, with 12. It began with 12 disciples that became 12 apostles and very quickly multiplied into 120 believers on the day of Pentecost that were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which exploded into 3,000 filled with the Holy Ghost and then 5,000 in just a short amount of time. And so from the second chapter of Acts, the the church, the, the spiritual kingdom that is thriving in the earth has been expanding. It's been pushing against the darkness. There's a reason why the devil comes down having great wrath. It's not because he knows he's going to succeed. It's because he knows that he has but a short time. It's because he can see the constant expansion of the kingdom of God in the earth and he understands that no matter how hard he tries, he is not going to stop the church of the living God. If you believe that, say amen. amen. And most times we see that, that leaven, leaven was the second parable. Most times we see that mentioned in a negative connotation, but here it is mentioned in a positive connotation. It is something that, that expands quickly through a scientific process that they have that they have just narrowed down I could spell it out for you I could read what the scientists say about that leavening process but but the end result is this explosion of carbon dioxide and it and it creates a very uh, 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 tasteful very taste worthy uh, very edible a loaf of bread that we can sink our teeth in. The preaching of the gospel works like leaven in the hearts of those who receive it. That's why it's important for you to be here every opportunity that you can so that the preacher can preach to you and can water that seed and can spark that faith and can encourage your soul and can preach that stuff off of you that the enemy is trying to put on you. Amen. So that the kingdom of God can expand uh, within you. This leaven works exactly. It works certainly. So does the word. And yet it works gradually. We want everything overnight, don't we? We want everything just, just snap our fingers and we want it to come to pass. But just like he told them he was going to run the enemy out of the land of Canaan, he said, I'm not going to do it all at once, but I'll do it little by little. So I don't know how long you've had the Holy Ghost, but with every prayer session and with every prayer meeting and with every Bible study session and with every teaching session and every time you come to the house of God and that preaching goes forth into your spirit and faith rises, amen, little by little there is an expansion of the kingdom of God within you. Now I've said this many times in today's world, I went to Bible college and and uh, I didn't go 10 years or 12 years or whatever, but most people go and they expect a 30-year ministry after going to Bible college for three and a half years. Jesus prepared 30 years for a three and a half year ministry. Amen. Because there was a testing that was going on. There was a proving that was going on. And there was a timing to the launch of his ministry. And when he launched his ministry, he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. Amen. And he began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the message. Amen. There is a kingdom message in your mouth. 
And it comes from your experience in the kingdom of God. It comes from every tragedy you've overcome, every sickness you've ever been healed of. That's why you need to testify when God heals your body because it's going to affect somebody. It causes the kingdom of heaven to be expanded. It causes this growth process. That's all right. I preach here a little bit. I'm just laying a little groundwork. It causes the expansion of faith, the expansion of the kingdom of heaven to take place with those around you. It is the leavening of the gospel that is on the inside of you. God deposited the earnest of your inheritance the day you got the Holy Ghost, but it's been a little while since then. You've prayed through some trials since then. You have gone over some mountains since then. You have walked through some valleys since then. And there have been some victories that have been attained. And the bread of life is expanding on the inside of you in a cosmic proportion. It is not something that is meant to remain small. That's all right. I'll preach here in a minute. It is not something that is supposed to be hidden forever. It is not something that is supposed to remain small. But God is expanding your borders, the kingdom of God on the inside of you. You have a word of faith in you that is going to affect somebody's life. Can I get an amen? You have a word of power that is on the inside of you that is going to explode out of you with cosmic proportions. It is a celestial thing. There is a spiritual thing that is happening with you. Don't ever wonder why the the devil attacks you the way that he attacks you. Don't ever wonder why the forces of hell and evil are coming after you day in and day out. It is because they are trying to prevent uh, the expansion of the kingdom of heaven that is on the inside of you. But I remember somebody saying, uh, greater is he that is within you. Come on, somebody start pushing. Say, excuse me, devil, you're going to have to make room for me here. And so this, this leavening, it takes place silently without being seen. But it's strong. It's without noise. And yes, it is the way of the Spirit, and it happens without fail. Thus, it is the expansion of the gospel in the world that we live in. It just took a handful of leaven in this parable. Jesus is telling us this is one of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Don't despise the day of small things. Some of, you do, some of you don't really remember what it was like when you weren't serving God before you had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But then when you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the battle was on and there was a war that was, that was raging. But since that time, there has been a metabolism in the spirit that's been going on in the inside, on the inside of you. I'll preach here in a little bit. But I'm trying to stir somebody to tell you you are more powerful than you think that you are. The enemy is trying everything that he can to convince you that you don't have power, that you aren't able to survive, that you will not go through the next season, that you do not have a future, that you will not climb this mountain, that you will not survive this storm. But the expansion of the kingdom of God declares different and the voice of God is saying it is expanding devil whether you like it or not. When the enemy is pushing on you, when the enemy is squeezing on you, on the inside, it's working silent. You can't see it. Come on. I'm telling you right now, even in this place tonight, amen, you can be seated because I feel like I'm floating up here right now. Mm, There is stuff that's happening in this building right now if the Lord could just open our eyes. Like the prophet prayed for his serpent, a servant and said, open his eyes. God, he looked on the hillside, saw all those enemies and their, their horses and their chariots. But when God opened his spiritual eyes, he said, hey, I looked a second time. And there's more that be with us than be with them. You need to understand. Your neighbor don't have to see what's going on on the inside. But the powers of darkness understand that something is happening in you. That there is a work, my God, have mercy, that's being created in you. The power of God is moving on the inside of you. If you'll make up in your mind, I'm not giving up. 
I'm not letting up. I'm staying on my knees. I'm staying full of faith. Uh, there's going to be some cosmic bread uh, that's going to expand uh, on the inside of you. There's a leavening process uh, of the righteousness of God that's happening. The full effect of that leavening, of course, is the rising, the risen bread. It's the risen bread. Basically, the yeast is creating so many air bubbles. This is the natural process that are moving through the dough that they are able to develop the, uh, develop the gluten without us having to knead the dough. Knead the dough. Now, that is not just a, just a random portion that he grabbed there. That three measures of meal and one bit of leaven, that's not just a random thing. That is a principle. Oh, I'm going to preach here tonight. That, I'm in my introduction. That is a principle that was set forth in Scripture. Now, I hate that this did not come to me until late yesterday evening because I was trying my best to track down what was the purpose beneath the purpose beneath the purpose beneath the purpose of it all. But I at least got one purpose of it. In ancient in ancient times, the dry measures, a measure was about three omers. Ten omers made up an ephah, an ephah of flowers. Not an ephod, but an ephah of flowers, which means three measures. This was an approximate measure of an ephah, three measures. It started in Genesis chapter 18 and verse 5 when the Lord said, I will, or Abraham said, I will fetch a morsel of bread. Angels had come to give him a word from the Lord. He said, I want you to stay right here. I'm going to go fetch a morsel. Everybody say a morsel. It started small, a grain of mustard seed, a little bit of leaven. I'm going to fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall uh, pass on. After that you shall pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the heart. He said, I'm going to fetch a morsel, but that measurement would feed a hundred people. He understood the process of something small expanding in the hands of something angelic. Now, we don't have time to go through it, but in the next verse... That angel pointed toward that rock and fire came out of that rock and it cooked that bread. It consumed that bread. That was an offering. You need to understand that that which is inside of you is not some ambiguous blob, but the fire of God is consuming it. It is attached to it. And this movement that is happening, on the, I'm going to preach right now because I'm telling somebody, this ain't just about coming to church on Thursday. It ain't just about being here Sunday morning and Sunday night. But every day it's happening silently. There's a growth that's happening in the people of God. The enemy don't know what to do about it. He is trying his best to push down upon the world and upon the church. But the church and the kingdom of God is expanding in the earth. And there's nothing that hell can do about it. Do you understand that we're on the winning side tonight? Do you understand there's no devil in hell that can stop what God is going to do in these lives? Last days. Come on. My God, have mercy. You got to pick yourself up. You got to get yourself out of the dung heap. You got to pull yourself out of the dirt and say, I'm a mighty man of God. I am a worshiper. I am a daughter of Zion. Don't make me mad, devil, because the kingdom of God is on the inside of me. Come on, praise him right now. Come on, praise him. Woo. Yeah, I feel the Holy Ghost. Gideon, in Judges chapter 6, verse 18. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee. And bring forth my present and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. This is the angel of the Lord. Gideon went in and made ready a kid. And unleavened cakes of an ephah, three measures of flour, the flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, 
and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. This process of the ephah, a fine flour, and these unleavened cakes that would become leaven, he said, in the kingdom of God. Amen. Until it expanded and basically takes over the earth, takes over the world. Do you understand that this is going to culminate in a celestial kingdom that's going to come to earth? If I could get somebody to hear me tonight. I don't know how long you've got, I don't know how long it's been since you got excited about the fact that all things are under our feet. About the fact that we have power over death and hell. Amen. That you can't threaten us with death because it's just a stepping stone to eternity for the people of God. I don't know when, that's all right, I don't want to bore you here tonight. I don't, I don't know when the last time you get excited. My God, have mercy about knowing that there is no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. Can I preach what you already know? He didn't say no weapon would be formed against you. He said there is no weapon that will form against you that will prosper. I know the enemy's got us convinced uh, that he's got all kind of weapons in his arsenal, that he can do anything he wants to bring down the people of God, but it will not prosper. I'm telling somebody of the Holy Ghost right now, the devil cannot stop the kingdom of God that is, God have mercy, that is within you. I feel something brewing in the atmosphere here tonight. I've come to tell the city of Louisville, whatever you think you tried to do to stop revival in this city, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. It is not going to happen. There is a cosmic, can we just have church here tonight? Thank you all 17 of you. Can we just have church here tonight? That ain't just bread on the inside of you. That's cosmic bread. It was fine flour. It was Christ that they butchered on that cross. And they ground him to powder. They put him in that grave. But they didn't count on that being risen bread. It became cosmic bread. Because there was a celestial thing that was going on. And whatever happens in your life, the enemy may be trying to bury you in a tomb somewhere. Put you in a hole in the ground somewhere. Dig a pit and make the world forget that you exist. But there's something cosmic that's happening in your life. There is an ever expanding power that is on the inside side of you. I feel something on me right now. I'm telling you God's power is on you. It can't be stopped. The devil cannot stop you. Somebody missed a good opportunity to run right there. Somebody missed a good opportunity to rejoice right there. Yeah. Yeah. God, I'm not trying to preach a sermon to you. I'm trying to tell you the kingdom of heaven is like a little bit of leaven that was put in three measures of meal. The Bible said. If they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they had known that one act of crucifixion was going to lead to a resurrection on the third day, that was going to cause people 2,000 years later, my God have mercy. I feel doodads from the top of my head down through the sole of my feet. If they had known that some drug addict in 2024 
was going to come out of their mess, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they had known that God was going to put something in you that would make you never want to give up, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Oh, God, have mercy. Thank you. Thank you, Zandre. First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 24. This is Hannah. She's at Shiloh. She's pleading for a child. Or she, she has given birth to a child. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour, three measures, and a bottle of wine and brought him into the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. In Ezekiel chapter 45 and verse 24, he shall prepare a meat offering of an ephah, three measures, for a bullock and an ephah of a ram and a hen of oil for an ephah. Now, the kingdom of God started with a measure. But it is growing into something that is immeasurable. And some of you are concerned about the things in your life that can still be measured. But God is trying to do something so big in you that nobody can measure what he's going to do in your life. Some of you are worried about the little things and God is saying don't worry about the little things because something is growing on the inside of your spirit and it is going to be an immeasurable revival. Some of you don't believe my God help me preach right now. Some of you do not believe that God can save all 50 members of your family in one service but he can because he has you in the kingdom of God. Oh, God, have mercy. Every prophetic word, you can be seated. Every prophetic word. Come here, Sam. I just need, a, I just need a, an example. Every prophetic word that is deposited, every time you're preached to, every time you're prophesied to, every time you're in prayer, and the Lord... Put something in your spirit. He is depositing in that. It's not going to happen overnight. It starts with just a little leavening process. But every time you pray, that process... That process is set further and further in motion. Some of you don't even realize right now. You can be seated. Some of you. How many ever baked bread before? I haven't. I'll confess I have not. But if you bake bread, you can't take it out of the oven until it's time. It's got to have just the right golden look to it. It's got to it's gotta have that nice airy look to it. You understand what I'm saying? But some of us are putting things in the oven and we keep opening the door of the oven. God have mercy. Every few days and every couple of weeks and saying, I don't understand. Why isn't it coming to fruition? And God saying, it is coming to fruition. But there is a process of leavening of the righteousness of God that is happening on the inside of you. And when it gets time... I'll open the oven. I'll tell you when it's done. Come on. You can't come out half-baked. You can't come out of a prayer closet until God is done. Oh, I'm going to preach right now. I'm going to preach right now. Woo! Yeah, woo! My God. Oh, I'm preaching right now. Oh, this is what we like to do. We like to turn the heat up higher than it's supposed to be so we can get our prayer answered in 13 minutes and 47 seconds because we got stuff to do. But what if you got so desperate 
for a move of God in your life that you buried yourself in a prayer closet until God knocked on the door and said it's time. I'm telling somebody it will come to pass but you got to stay in the leavening. I'm talking about not sin leavening. I'm talking about the righteousness of God leavening. Oh, come on, come on. From your youth up, here's these, these kiddos here. Come here, Earth. Come here, baby. Here, here's this cutie pie. Hey, Amen. Train up a child in the way that they should go. How old are you, baby? She's six years old. She got the Holy Ghost? Okay, I couldn't remember. All right, she's got the Holy Ghost. She got it, I think, a short time ago, right? Right? Okay. She got the Holy Ghost. And right now, Right now, there's a process that's germinating on the inside. <laughs> She's got a mom and a daddy that are going to put boundaries in her life. And they're going to make sure every time they see the enemy coming in, they see something trying to creep in, they're going to, they're going to keep those boundaries set so that when she's old, she won't depart from it. So that that process can continue. Oh, God, have mercy. Please don't live for God on the same level that you were living for God five years ago. Please don't come to the house of God and act like you were acting five years ago. And please, for goodness sake, don't come to the house of the Lord and worship less than you did last year. Well, you don't understand what storm I'm going through. Don't make me re-preach this morning's message. Oh, I know what kind of storm you're going through. That's why when you come to the house of the Lord, you got to take the chains off of your praise. you got to get your feet moving and say, God, I know I'm going through hell, but I'm going to worship in heaven. I know the de- oh, God have mercy. I know the devil's attacking, but God is greater. God is greater. God is greater. Come on. I'm preaching right now. There is an expansion. Oh, I'm going to give you a chance to praise him right now. Come on. Woo. Come on, praise him. 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 Come on, Immeasurably extended in time and space. Now, listen, I've lived long enough to understand. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you pray for. And what I mean by that is, when you're trying to get somewhere in the kingdom, you're trying to get to the place where you really feel like you're making a difference and impact in people's lives. You don't realize the people, they're going to pull at you, call you in need. And I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. But I'm telling you, there's a responsibility that comes with growth. Some of you are reaching for things That God knows you're not able to carry. But if you'll let that process work, God is going to prepare you for the things that you are reaching for. The bread of life has a taste like nothing else in this world or the next world. Once you get a hunger... For that heavenly bread, that manna come down from heaven. Are you with me tonight? It becomes so insatiable. There becomes such a hunger. I'm going to keep preaching this until I, until I, I guess I don't have a voice to preach it anymore. But if you could understand how valuable you are to a pre-service prayer meeting. 
This is not about punishing you because you're in leadership. This is not about putting guidelines on you because you're in leadership. You ber- you're in leadership because you have something that people need and they're willing to follow it. And leaders have to lead. Are you hearing me here tonight? When you come into a pre-service prayer meeting, you have to be a catalyst. We're not looking for followers in a pre-service prayer meeting. What we're looking for is people that will say, hey, look, when God pulled me up out of the muck and the mire and God deposited in me what he deposited in me, there is something that has been expanding that has gotten a hold of me. I'm going to tell you, I'm not putting him above everybody else, okay? But this man right here, this man right here, the, the times, my God, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning in this sanctuary, like clockwork, five, six days a week he is in here. I don't know how long you've been here, Brother Gary, but it's been a long time. You ain't that old. You're only 35 years old, so I don't know. I think you've been here like 90 years or something. You, you've doubled your lifetime or something. But the reason is because he realizes Every word that I speak is important. Every time I show up, it's important. He realizes he's not doing this to be seen. He had never said this to me. But he realizes I don't just want to be close to God, but somebody's watching me. He may never say that to anybody. But there's something that happens in your psyche that says somebody is watching me. And if I don't show up, they'll think I'm a quitter. God doesn't need any more quitters in the kingdom. I'm trying to be kind. I don't know why people look so bored when they come to the house of God. And I'm going to tell you right here at an early age, right here at an early age, there's something expanding. My God, we need a revival in our youth group so bad. I'm not just talking about you guys. I'm talking about all the kids out there that are being pumped full of this transgender junk and non-binary mess and homosexuality and whatever. That, that is a very small segment of society. And that leaven is expanding too, but it will not squash out the kingdom of heaven and the righteousness of God if we can get some young people with a backbone that'll stand up and say, hey, I'm not trying to be ugly, but God created male and female, and that's it. My God, I felt something hit right there. I'm not proposing that you young ladies be ugly, but my God, get a backbone somebody and stand up and say, that is not the will of God. That's not how God does things. What I'm trying to say is, let that mustard seed expand. Let that grow into the greatest of herbs. And let the birds of the air come and lodge. You can't make birds come lodge in the branches. But if you will let your life grow, the birds will come. Oh, come on. I wish you'd clap your hands unto the Lord. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord. Oh, come on. Yes. Now, well, I was thinking yesterday, you can stay standing. Let's see, I better not say it like that. Maybe I better not say it at all. Y'all don't know what it is. <laughs> I used to be a whole lot meaner than I am right now. <laughs> and some of the people that were here when I first got here said, hey, Amen, don't do it. <laughs> now, I use that word mean loosely. I was only mean to devils. Dressed up as people. 
Because when we came here 22 and a half years ago, this place was a burned over field. It was a mess. I don't care how you want to dress it up. You put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. And this place was a pig. I ain't kidding. It was a mess. And I was 31 years old. And I decided, my wife and I are here. If we're going to stay here, we're going to have to decide how we're going to spend our prime. We're either going to spend our prime coddling people who want to do things the same way that we've been doing it and getting the same results, which was nothing. I could sp- we could spend our prime trying to pet on people and pamper them and beg people to do this and beg people to do that. Or we can just get down to the point. We can just get straight to the bottom line and say, this is how it's going to be. And if you don't like it, there's another church you can go to. And that's the way it was for about six or seven or eight years. And I was real nice when I walked in the door the first time. And I was nice for about two or three months until I started getting attacked on every side. Some of you folks that were here when we got here, you have no idea the stuff my wife and I went through those first six or seven years. You have no idea the people that got right in our face and said things to us that I wouldn't say to my worst enemy. And I made up in my mind, I'm 31 years old and I'm not going to spend my 30s begging people to serve God and do it with a passion. And so people thought I was mean, but I wasn't mean, I was determined. And I got to thinking yesterday, man, I've let some things go, you know? I've, just, I've let leaders just do what they want to do and show up when they want to show up and pray when they want to pray and be part of a pre-service prayer if they want to. Show up and rock back and forth with their mouth not moving and don't say a word. Just get the mic and say, come on, folks, let's do it and whatever. But I'm going to tell you, I feel a little mean spirit getting back on me. Because uh, I got about, whoa, and uh, a couple of amens that are, come on, Bishop. I'm not trying to be unkind, but we've got a city to reach and we've got a world that needs to hear this gospel. And what's on the inside of us deserves our attention. It's cosmic bread. This is something from another world. Come on. Come on. You need to either decide to get in or get out because we're going on and we're about to have revival. Come on. My God, I feel something happening right now. Come on. Somebody needs to reach down. I got some young people worshiping God. I got some young people running the aisles here tonight. We need a generation that'll say this ain't the world's living. This is the kingdom of heaven living. Woo! I wish somebody would praise him right now. I wish somebody would praise him. Come on. Oh, God, come on. I feel something in this place trying to happen. I feel something trying to break loose right now. Come on. There's a tug of war going on in this building. But God is going to win if you let him. Come on. Come on. I feel it. I feel it. Ha. I feel it. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Some of you that have come along in the last 10 years, you don't know how we had to fight and scratch and kick and pray and fast to get to where we are right now. And we can't give it up. We can't go back. We can't give up the ground that we've gained. We've got to expand and not retract. I'm waiting on somebody to respond. I'm waiting on somebody to respond. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm waiting on somebody to respond right now. Come on. Come on, Adam Tetrick. There's a revival on the inside of you. 
need about 30 more people just like that right there that believe I've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. I didn't come to be a bench warmer. I didn't come to sit here and do nothing. I've got cosmic bread on the inside of me. Alamosata. Alamosata. Come on, son. Oh, my God. I feel something breaking. I feel something breaking. Santa. Santa. Alamosata. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I wish somebody would give him a crazy praise. I wish somebody could give him some cosmic praise. Oh! Oh! Jesus! Jesus! Jesus is the mighty God. Oh, ha, ha, ha. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, and of his kingdom and his government, there shall be no end. Oh, Santa. Come out, come out, come out. I'm calling for this church to come out of the doldrums. I'm calling you to come out, come out, come out of the cave, come out, come out. In the name of Jesus, my God, come out. Somebody right now, the Holy Ghost, God, God's about to use you. God is about to use you. Solamaha, Solola Morisi. This is in recess. Ah, I need some seasoned saints to remember some old time revival. Jesus, glory. Stand around and look. Come on, young people. It's time to have revival. It's time to have revival. It's time for you to come out of the corner. Hallelujah. Jesus. I bless that wonderful name.
Somebody can get the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody can be healed right now. Somebody can be called to a ministry right now. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, let it work. 